Okay, uh, then let's move on. We talked about accelerated and straight line depreciation, the two main types. So the next question, uh, discuss with your partner, what are capital expenditures? What does capital expenditure mean? What is capital expenditure? Give me an 
on the next slide we could see an example. Yes. What kind of investment would be capital expenditure? Oh. Yes, well, can you give me an example of an investment which is capital expenditure? Software yeah, What kind of investment does a software business make which can be capital expenditure? Well, I mean, what are they spending the money on? Hmm? On what? Research. research and development, okay? Do you understand research and development? Yes. Anything else? Building. building, buying a new building. That's a capital expenditure. Expenditure means, we can say spending, spending money. Capital means money. Expenditure means spending. So spending money, right? Remember we said at the start of the course that capital means money. Capital expenditure means spending money. We have growth, spending money, right? Spending money to create new assets and new growth. Maintenance, spending money to maintain things. Okay. So usually when we're talking about capital expenditure, we're talking about a large amount of money in a one-off one -off payment. So operating expenses is uh, like electricity we pay every month, right? But capital expenditure, we don't pay every month. It's not an operating expense, right? Capital expense means we just pay a, like a one-off thing, buying a car or buying a building. In this case, we saw the example that in this case, even uh, making promotional CDs is a one-off cost. So that could also be used as capital expense. Okay, so... <coughs> Let's, let's talk about working capital. So, uh, <coughs> here we can see some equation. So, how, what is, what is non-cash working capital? Discuss with your partner. We can see an equation here at the bottom. What is included in non-cash working capital? So, what does non-cash or working capital mean? So generally, what does working capital mean? And how can we get our non-cash working capital? So we can see here an equation for non-cash working capital. Okay. So discuss with your partner. What are we talking about when we talk about working capital? Remember, capital just means money, working money. So what are we talking about when we say working money? And then if we say non-cash working money, what is that? Uh, yes. hmm? Raw materials. Raw materials. Raw materials. Raw materials you use to, to make your product. They are cost. Hmm? Okay, so you should ask your partner, ask your partner, what is working capital? Okay, how do we calculate non-cash working capital? Ask your partner.
Okay, so Bak J Young, or is Bak J Young? Yes? What is working capital? What are we talking about? Something that we're doing in our operations. Right? What kind of things? What kind of things are we talking about? Four things included in working capital and three things in non-cash working capital. What are they? You can see here. <coughs> can anybody tell me what is included in working capital? What kind of things are included in working capital? Hmm? Inventory. Inventory. What assets? More specifically. We have accounts payable and accounts receivable. Receivable. Okay. If we include cash, then we'll also have cash. This means this is working capital means that it's working at the moment, working money. I, I need some cash to pay for my daily expenses, okay? Maybe cash is included. Inventory is uh, the stock we have in the shop. That's working. The stock is, inventory is working, right? It's being used. People are buying the inventory, it's being moved, okay? The accounts payable and the accounts receivable, it's currently in the air. We didn't get paid for it yet, so it's a little bit like it's working at the moment, right? It's up in the air. We sold the goods, but we didn't get paid yet, okay? We have goods in the shop, but they haven't been sold yet. So this is called working capital, okay? It's, been, it's kind of up in, do you understand, up in the air? It's money which is being used elsewhere. So we can see here, it cannot be used in another place, okay? Because... I need, I need to have inventory, and I need to give credit, and I need to, uh, also I can pay on credit. So, the next question, how should I manage the working capital to have more cash? How should we manage our working capital to have more cash? Discuss with your partner. manage our working capital to have more cash. We want to have a lower number for working capital. Because this money cannot be used in another place, right? It's up in the air. We want to have this low as possible. So what can we do to make this working capital as low as possible? So we can use the cash elsewhere. Where could we use the cash? If we're not using it in working capital, where can we use it instead? Invest in something else, right? What would be an example that we could invest in instead? S&P hmm? 500. 500, right? Maybe that goes up 8% a year, so we could get profit. Or just in a very safe way, we could invest in government bonds and get some profit, right? So we want to minimi minimize, we want to make lower the money is being used in working capital. That's up in the air. So how can we do that? Okay, so uh, Park Chan Chan Yong. Yes. What should we do? <laughs> Can you tell me? <laughs> I can't hear you. Can I speak more loudly? 
What? Yeah, so can you tell me? You can use your own words if you want. So can you, you said it, it's up here, right? So can you tell me? Tell me the answer loudly, please, so the older students can hear. Yes? Yes? Do you understand this? Hmm? What part don't you understand? Which word don't you understand? Yes? Uh, generous credit terms means that credit, do you, do you have a credit card? Do you understand credit? Xinyong. Terms is Jogan. Jogan. Is that correct? Jogan. 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 So credit terms. For example, you have to pay 5% interest. Okay? And you have to pay back in three months. That's credit terms. If you are going to give me more generous, could you give me an example of more generous credit terms? Who could give me an example? Change this to make it more generous. Six months, right? I have a longer time to pay back. Anything else you could change? Lower interest rate, right? So 3% in six months. Which do you prefer? This one or this one? The second one, okay? So if we don't have to pay for six months, do we have more cash or less cash? More cash. We can invest the cash somewhere else, right? We don't have to pay back for longer. Sometimes, often they'll give some 0% interest, right? Muija. Right? So you could have Muija Samge Wall or Muija Yukwila. Which do you prefer? That's more generous credit term, okay? So then you can use your money, you can invest your money. If I'm a, uh, just, I go to Lale Mart and they offer me Muija Samge Wall or Yukke Wall, I don't really mind that much because it's not much money, right? Maybe it's just Shipman One, right? Am I going to get my Shipman One and invest in the S&P and make a big profit in yeah. three months? Maybe I'll make a 5,000 won profit. But what about the transaction cost, the time it took me to set up the account and invest the money, right? So I'm not going to do that. But in companies where we're dealing with millions of dollars, is it worth to do that? Yeah. Yes, if you invest a million dollars and you get, let's say, just 1%, what is 1% of a million dollars? 10% of a million dollars is 100,000, so 1% is $10,000, right? So if you were able to make 1% in three months by investing in government bonds or something else, you get an extra $10,000, okay? So if you get more generous credit terms from your supplier, you can have more cash that you can use somewhere else. Get your customers to pay the bills faster. Do you understand bills? Do you like bills? Improve collection. Sometimes people don't pay their bills on time, so you have to uh, collect from them. What can you do if somebody doesn't pay you the bill? How can you collect money? Send around your friends to... I saw some Korean movie where they, they go on the sofa, don't leave the house. <coughs> Death collector. You can hire some agency also, right, to get the money back. Often in the international transaction, we have uh, credit terms where you get a letter of credit from the bank of the other company. So it means if the company doesn't pay, the bank pays instead. Okay? Then the bank, their bank is responsible for collecting the money. <coughs> so, do you understand this word minimize? What does, what's an easy, an easy way to say minimize? Reduce, make lower. Okay, we already talked about this in Taiwan that they have just in time. 
just in time manufacturing, so their inventory is very low. So they're not using much cash in their inventory or space in their inventory. So they can put the cash somewhere else, use the space for something else. Okay, so then this, uh, just we don't need to discuss this just here. This is how we calculate the cash flow to the firm. Changing from accounting earnings to cash flow. Okay, so we said normally companies make their reports like this. Accounting earnings, right? Uh, and we end up, so we have this kind of thing, revenues, expenses, appreciation, income. So we have operating income. This is how companies make their financial report or plan. So what we do is we take <coughs> the operating income, EBIT, one minus the tax rate, then we add depreciation, we subtract the change in the non-cash working capital and subtract the capital expenditures, and this will give us our cash flow for every year. So, uh, if I give you a number, I can give you this number, and then I tell you depreciation, the change, and the capital expenditure, you should be able to calculate the cash flow, right? Like this. So I tell you that operating income is 50, okay? Uh, we know the taxes. So we find the operating income after taxes. Then we have add the depreciation, minus the capital expenditures, minus the change in working capital, and each year we have our cash flow. Okay, so that now we have a cash flow for each year. This is our number in cash. This is our number using accounting. Okay? We already said depreciation is not a cash value. Okay, so we need to add it back in here to make a cash number. So discuss with your partner what is a sunk cost. What does sunk mean in English? And what is a sunk cost? So ask an answer with your partner. Ask your partner. Pretend I ask you the question. What is a sunk cost? Okay, and second part of the question, should some costs be considered when we're deciding to do a project? So what is a sum cost? Should the sum cost be considered when we're deciding to take a project? Why or why not? What is a sunk cost? What is a sunk? What does sunk mean in English? Sink, sank, sunk. What does sunk mean? Down or at the bottom of the ocean, right? It's already gone. So what is a sunk cost? Um, 
Can you say that in easy English? What does it mean, incurred? Yes, so it's already been used, the money has already been used, right? And we can't get it back. Can't be recovered, we can't get it back, okay? Uh, so the second part of the question, uh, OMG, should we consider the sum cost when doing, deciding to make a project? No, why not? Yes, okay, we discussed it in the class. It's finished and we can't get it back. So we have to be forward looking in finance. Okay? So they did some experiment with some managers and they asked them. First of all, they gave them some projects. They said to some managers, uh, you're going to make a one million profit. Okay? You're going to make a profit of one million. You've already spent 8 million on the project. You're going to make a 1 million profit. In order to make the 1 million profit, you have to spend another 2 million. Okay? Or they just told some managers to make a 1 million profit, you just have to, to pay 2 million. In this case, pay 2 million to make a 1 million profit. 100% of the managers said, no, we're not going to do that, okay? But in this case, they told the managers, we already spent 8 million on this project, okay? Now we need to spend 2 million to make 1 million profit. 40% of the managers said, yes, we've already spent 8 million, so we need to keep going, okay? So it's behavioral psychology problem. People already spent a lot of money. They see the big amount of money they already spent. And they say, oh, we already spent 8 million, so it's just another 2 million, right? But we have to forget this. Really what we're doing is spending 2 million to make a 1 million profit, okay? If we're forward looking. So we have to forget about the costs we had in the past that are not going to be used in the future. So we have psychology. Psychology is hard to ignore the some cost, especially if a manager has been doing a lot of work on the project, right? They did a lot of work on the project already, then it's hard for them to give up the project. So, I think we did until uh, this part, so then let's continue with the regular class. So we have allocated costs. Do you understand allocated? What does allocate mean? What does it mean to allocate something? Inspect the name and password. Can anybody tell me what does allocate mean in English? If I allocate you into a group, what does that mean? Hmm? Dividing, yes, dividing things, okay? So I have a pizza, I allocate you this part of the pizza, I allocate you this part of the pizza. So companies have to do the same thing. So we have Disney, Disney HQ, where is Disney HQ? Who works? Do you understand HQ? What does HQ mean? Headquarters. Who works in Disney HQ? CEO. The CEO of Disney. Who else? CFO. COO, CMO. So on, right? Depends on the structure of the company. Then here we have the TV. We have parks. We have toys. So who is going to pay the salary of the... Which business is going to pay the salary of the CEO? <coughs> Nobody pays his salary? Everybody. Yes, we have to allocate those costs. Divide the cost among the different com companies. They are called allocated costs. Okay? 
So when we are making the uh, Disneyland, Disneyland uh, in Rio, we also have some cost of the paying for the CEO. We can't ignore this cost, right? If, ev if everybody just ignored the CEO cost for every project, then CEO wouldn't get any salary. Okay? So we also have other general and administrative expenses. Okay? So we have to allocate this. Often they use sales, revenues. Which, which businesses make, you make big revenue, you pay more of the CEO salaries. Okay? Or profit, you make a big profit. Or earnings, you pay more of the salary. For large companies, these costs can be significant. So this can be a big cost and result in the rejection of projects. So these costs are not in incremental, they would <coughs> exist anyway. This makes the company worse off. So it is only the incremental components that should show up in project analysis. So just similar to sunk cost, anyway we're going to have this cost of the CEO, whether we decide to do Disneyland or not. Okay, we're going to have this cost. So we can uh, decide when we are deciding to take a project. We can use like the sunk cost. So we can take out these costs for the project. So here we have an example. We have a question here. So the first year. We have revenues of $1,000 and we have general and administrative costs of $250. The next year we have revenues of $1,200 and administrative costs of $270. So what percentage of the general and administrative cost is variable? Do you understand variable? Variable means it's changing with the revenues. So it's a hard, it's a maths question. Are you good at maths? You have to try and solve this. It's a maths problem. So we want to find out what's variable. Which of these costs is relate is going to go up if we do our business? Okay. Which of these costs is going to be the same whether we do our business or not? So if we look at this these numbers, we should be able to do some calculation and say what percentage of the cost is variable. So try to figure out uh, the answer. It's not an easy question, so if you got the answer, did anybody get the answer? So just we're we're using these numbers to calculate how much is variable. So just from year one to year two, 
year one, uh, we had uh, 1,000. Year two, we had 1,200. So the revenue changes by 200. Okay, difference is 200. The cost is 250 and 270. So the cost change changed by 20. So that's 10 percent. Okay, and the same for year two to year three. It changes by 300. Two to three it changes by 300 and it changes by 30. So 1,200 to 1,500 is 300. 270 to 300 is 30. So it also changed by 10 percent. Okay, so we can see that uh, we have 10 percent of the. This is going up by 10 percent every year. So if we get 10 percent of uh, the start is one uh, one million, so we get. Or sorry, one thousand. So we can call it one million. So we'll get 10 percent will be uh, 10, 100. Okay, and then we put the 100 over the 250. Or sorry, put the 250 over the 100. Then we are going to get 40%, uh, 0 0.4, right? So, just to explain again, we can see that when it changes, our revenue and the GA costs, the relationship. This goes up 100, this goes up 10, right? So my revenue goes up 100, this one goes up 10. So it means that my variable cost is like 10%, right? But we asked what percentage of this cost is variable. So we have to find it. This is our total general and administrative cost. So what percent of this one is variable? So in the first year, the cost, the variable part would be 10% of my revenue, which is 1 million, and then we divide it in and we get the 40%. So, can you repeat please how the uh, we get 40%? Uh, how do we get 40%? Yeah. First of all, we see that uh, the general uh, expenses are increasing by 10% every year, right? So this. This one is going up by 10%, not of its own number, by 10% of revenue, right? So it means that 10% uh, of my revenue is being spent on general and administrative costs on this project, okay? So I will take 10% of the revenue here, and I will... This, so this general and administrative cost, some of this is not changing, right? This 250, some of this is not changing, it's not variable. It doesn't matter whether I take the project or not. So if I look at Disney, some things are not variable. The CEO's salary doesn't really change, right? But other things are variable. If I take, if I take the project in, in Brazil, what extra general and administrative costs could I have? Do you think it would cost more for marketing? cost more for research and development, for planning, in the headquarters, we have some extra cost. We might have to hire more people in headquarters because we decide to open Rio Disney. What do you think? Yes or no? Yes. Do you think there will be more costs in headquarters or just the same cost in headquarters because we decide to open Rio Disney? More. More costs, right? So we want to see what percentage of that is going to be uh, a variable cost, okay? Which is going to be the more cost. The variable means that the cost is changing because we take this project, okay? So we're interested to know a little bit like some costs. How much is the expenses changing, general and administrative expenses changing because we take this project, right? How much is the same and how much is changing? So we know that at the start we have general and administrative costs of 250. That's quite high for revenues of 1,000, right? But a lot of this money is uh, just 
not change because we took the project. When we made our calculation, we find out that 60% of this money is not changed. 40% of the money is changed because we took the project. So 40% is $100 and 60% is $150. So $150 we have to pay anyway. And $100 is the variable cost. Okay? Then 100 over or 250 over 100 is 40 percent. So 100 is 40 percent of 250. Okay. So where did we get 100 from? By calculating here, the, looking at the revenues on each year, we we calculate our revenues and the general and administrative cost each year, and we see that the cost is going up with our project as our project gets bigger but it's going up just 10% of our project. Just 10% of our, pro our project is just affecting 10% of the general and administrative costs, 10% of the revenue. So we go back and we get 10% of the revenue here, which is 100. And then we compare that to, for here, for here our revenue was 200. 10% is 20. Here our revenue, extra revenue was 300. 10% is 30, okay? Here our revenue, at the start was 1 million, so 10% is 100. So, it's a little bit uh, complicated uh, calculation. It's for finding the variable cost. So if we find the variable cost, then we can uh, also we can see here, we can find the six, we can find the number for the fixed GNA, and we can put here. So we have our cash flow, and then these costs would exist anyway, so we don't include these costs. Pre-project investment, pre-project depreciation, or fixed, fixed uh, general expenses, right? So we can uh, add in, back in these numbers. So we're adding back in the fixed general and expenses, and we get this called incremental cash flow to the company, right? which is more accurate than just cash flow. So, in this pre-project investment, 500 was like a sunk cost, which we would have had anyway. So we can take this away, uh, and then we have fixed the fixed general and administrative expenses. We're not going to consider when we do the project, okay? So, if the fixed general and expenses is uh, 78, it's going to be plus this, so it means our cash flow will be higher. So, what we are doing with this equation is trying to find out how much of the general and administrative costs are fixed costs. And this is the equation that we use to figure that out. So, you can see Again, you can see on the bottom of the slide is uh, the explanation about the, the calculation, right? If you look on the, you just have the notes. You don't have to note at the bottom of the slide. Okay, here's the answer about the calculation. So this is just making an estimation of uh, my general and expenses costs go up as my revenues go up. Okay, so it must mean that my project is causing some more general and administrative costs. But it's, it's not going up by, uh, this is 25% of this, so it doesn't go up by everything, right? If there was only my company, this revenue went up to 1,200, we would expect that this would also go up to 25% of 1,200, which would be about, uh, Another four is going to be uh, 300, right? 25% would be 300. But it didn't go up to 300, just 270. Right? The reason is that some of this is fixed cost. Some of this uh, one is being used by other parts of the company. So our project is only affecting the, the costs less so, so we have to make this calculation. Do you have any other question about this this part? Some cost and allocated cost. So it's quite similar. The sum cost and the 
fixed cost of the <coughs> headquarters or general administrative costs. If we have a company put jet, that would be one. Maybe they, they use the company jet to fly the executives to Disneyland. So some cost is going to go. <coughs> so. We're going to use time value of money to calculate the returns. So cash flows across time cannot be added up. So if I make $100 in year one, $200 in year two, $300 in year three, I can't just do this and say that's $600. Okay? That's not possible because money in year two and year three has a different value than money in year one. Okay? So we, we already talked about this. We have to put all the cash flows to the same point in time. So we already did the calculation. We can either make future value or present value, right? But all the cash flows have to be at the same point, either year zero or year 10, okay? So this, we have to use, move these cash flows through time. To move cash flows through time, we need to use our present value equations. Can you remember your present value equations? Simple present value, right? Uh, annuity, like we talked about. Mainly, the good news is in returns, we're mainly using just simple, simple uh, present value, simple cash flows, which is the cash flow at year three over one plus the interest rate to the power of three. <coughs> so, we can either use discounting, which is mainly used, where we take the future cash flow, bring it back to today. Or we can use compounding, where we take the cash flows and bring them to the future. Which one do you think is simpler for analyzing the project? Bringing the money back to today or bringing the money forward to the future? Which would you prefer to do? Bring the money forward to the future or bring it back to today? Today, right? It's more simple to bring the money back to today. So, when we're calculating our cash flow for each year, we'll use this equation, right? So we have to, every year has usually has different cash flow. So if we have 10 years, we have to do 10 calculations. Year one, year two, year three, year four. Each year we have to find what's that money worth in today's value to get the, uh, the cash flows. Can anybody remind me the three reasons why the cash is more valuable today than in the future? What are the three reasons? Inflation. Inflation. Real. Risk. Real. Real interest rate. Okay, so we have to account for those things. So take the money back to today's value. This is, we will use, it's called net present value. Do you understand present? We're living in the present now. Value. You understand value? How much is it worth? Right? Net, you don't have to worry about it. You can just think present value, right? So net, we'll be talking about that in the next time. So let's uh, finish there for today. If you have any question about your project, you can ask me about that. Did, I, did everybody sign the attendance page? Where is the attendance page? Thank you.